All right, so we're recording if you don't want your face on. I have no problem if you shut your video off or whatever you feel comfortable with doing. These are all going to be available at the end of the day. I'll add them to the main that you can visit the ones that have happened today. I've already seen the recordings come in for the ones this morning. What's nice, um, if you all have your paid Zoom account, is that you'll save it to the and then you'll get a notification that it's come in. And I'll give you in the, um, in the advanced class, if you're going to stay for that one or watch it later, you'll be able to see how I'm managing that whole recording. So, letting people in. Thank you for introducing yourselves because you're from all different schools. Here's the link again. Okay. And like I said, when I have Zoom on, it block, blocks my clock, so I don't even know what time it is. It's 1.03. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'll let people in as they come in so that that will happen as we go along. We're saying hi, everyone. We have a lot of new staff this year. So today, we'll talk about the basics of Zoom. I know you all basically used Zoom in the spring, but um, we learned it on our own for the most part. I was learning right alongside you on how to use it. Since then, I think we've all become more adept, but I'm sharing this for anyone that feels like they have some holes or want some clarification. I've been working on some recordings that are in that Google Doc. If you scroll down, we're sharing one Google Doc um, with the advanced class. I couldn't see putting the notes in two different Google Docs, so the notes for today's hour, or this hour, for the next hour will all be in the same Google Doc. That link, I'll pop it in the chat again. Bomb it. Um, the chat has the link. When you get in there, you'll be able to scroll down. So I'm trying to think of different ways to present in these courses. So the first one I did this morning was challenge-based PD, and I gave you basically a list of tasks to follow. The second one I gave you kind of a playlist of things to watch or read. You could choose want to you and what you wanted to learn more about. And this one here, I feel like um, needs to be more give and take because I have a feeling that you guys are going to have a lot of questions. Um, I'm going to hit mute all just so that I don't have to worry about that. Um, there we go. So even though I've created a ton of videos that show you how to do all of this, I'm still going to give you a walkthrough. So if you're like, ugh, a walkthrough, that's boring. You can go watch the videos and then come back if you want to, or you can um, close or close this window, which I guess is leaving and then coming back. Uh, whatever works for you. The videos are in the bottom of the dock. I'll show you that in a minute, but at least stay here for the introduction because of course it's going to be awesome. All right, let me click, and we're moving ahead. So this is basically how to set up and host your Zoom. We'll be going through the settings that happen in the dashboard and then the things that you see in the actual Zoom room. And what I'm hoping is that you'll have um, some good guidelines on how to keep safe and secure. I know that they're at the beginning of the lockout or whatever it was. There was a lot of stuff on the news about Zoom and it had a bad rap about Zoom bombers and all that good stuff. So there are some best practices that minimize that possibility. So we'll be talking about that. Um, I'll be giving you a walk through on the Zoom screen itself and whatever I just clicked on by mistake and I already forgot. But <laughs> this is so hard. And there's nobody here. Well, Karen's here. All right. So I have a few of you in the library, but you're so good that it's like you're not here. You're so awesome. Okay. So this is a video that I'm going to play while I still let people in the room because the doorbell is still ringing. All right, let's start with a video, shall we? I'm going to teach you 10 recommendations to teach online using Zoom. Stay tuned to the last one, which I really like. All of them are pretty useful and they'll make your life a lot easier when you're teaching using this amazing tool called Zoom. Let's 
do it. First, disable audio. Make sure your video and audio are off by default when you enter a meeting, just in case you're not prepared for that meeting. And then you can turn it on as soon as you join the meeting. Second, test the audio. There's nothing more frustrating than entering a meeting and being fumbling with the audio settings. Do that before you start a meeting. Third, test a video. You can do that by clicking the video before you start your meeting, but then make sure that you have enough light pointing to your face or stand near a window and also that your eyes are a third from the top so it looks nice and even your frame. Four, enable waiting room. To avoid unwanted people joining your meeting, make sure that you have an, a waiting room. That way you only accept people that you want to. Five, lock meeting. Another safety measure is that you can lock the meeting once you have all the students. Six, mute all except yourself. Click on participants, then mute all. Then you can allow participants to unmute themselves or not. You can also use the shortcut command control M to accomplish the same thing. Seven, share computer audio. Click on share and then click on share computer sound and optimize screen for a video clip. That way any video that you share via Zoom will sound perfectly on your student's computer. Recording, recording, convert it, C -c convert it. Eight, adjust aspect ratio. If you're sharing just a specific app or window, you wanna make sure that it's stressed out so it fills your student's screen. Nine, whiteboard and animations. Click share screen, then select whiteboard and then click share. And now you can use annotations to start drawing anything that you want. You can also click on the plus button on the bottom right corner to add more pages. And you can also save these pages as PNG files locally in your computer. You can also annotate web pages or anything on your computer, as you can see here. 10, press spacebar to talk. Just go to audio settings and then click on press and hold space key to temporarily unmute yourself. And now every time you press the spacebar, you can speak. And as soon as you stop doing so, you will be muted again. Super useful feature as well. I hope you enjoy learning those 10 top tips to use Zoom when you're teaching online. Thanks for watching. Okay, so the training's over. You guys have a great day. <laughs> All right, I like that video for a couple of reasons. I like it because he talks fast. If there's something I really need to know, I can stop him because I have the controls and I can rewind him and play it again. Um, some of them don't apply to me. What the heck is an aspect ratio and what does it matter to me? I don't know, maybe I'll learn that as I use Zoom more. So I like it because it's a top 10, you know how long you're in it for. It's going to move quickly. He puts some humor in it. Um, those are the types of videos that I find are easier to share with students because they hold their attention a little bit better. But um, there's also a few little nuggets in there that might be worth using, but that certainly was not your training. That would freak you people out and I don't want to do that today. Okay, so we're going to be talking about the settings you can make in your profile and the settings that you can take care of in your Zoom room. The tricky part about this is that I can show you my profile and how to set up the settings there, but I can't show you my Zoom room. Like there's no way for you to see my screen right now unless I somehow do it on my phone. I actually did try to make a video on my phone right after lunch today and I ran out of memory. So there we go with that. But the videos that I've already made that I've already put into the Google Doc, this Google Doc that I talk about on all of these presentations now has those resources in it. So you want to make sure you open the Google Doc. I'm going to put a link into the chat and vomit. Um, asking in the chat about recurring meetings, you can only recur you can only set up a recurring meeting so far into the future. You can only do it like 30 days, 45 days, something like that. And then sometime during those 30 to 45 days, you can go out another 30 to 45 days, whatever the magic number is. So you can't set it for the rest of the school year or even till Christmas. So that's with the recurring things. I'll go in and show you how to do it. But um, <laughs> I, the video was awesome. I'm reading your comments as they come in. So I just put a link into the Google Doc. So I'm gonna go to the Google Doc now. Now. <laughs> pushing all the buttons on my computer right now. Ah! And the doorbell's ringing. You people are everywhere. 
I'm still sharing my screen. I'm going to the Google Doc. I have to now, trials and tribulations of Zoom, I now have to open the list again and admit them. And I have to open the chat again because every time I change my screen, go figure. If we Zoom, if our Zoom link is on our landing page, how can we protect it from others seeing it besides the waiting room? I would not put your Zoom link on your landing page. I know that it's um, tempting because it makes it so much easier, but it's going to be a public document so anybody can see it. So do not put your Zoom links on your landing pages. You could put, you know, like email, email me for the Zoom link. Let me go through some of the setup things and then you can decide the best way you want to set up your Zoom meetings and maybe decide as well. So let me zoom down here. I'm not going to play any of these, but this top one is adorable and it talks about having um, basically having manners in a Zoom meeting, which all of you have perfect manners. It's not for you to watch, it's for you to share with your students. It's a cute little girl. You can always check it out later. Then these are actual videos that I've made that you can see all of the settings and all the screens because it's a screen recording, so you get to see the buttons. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go to my um, setup page in Zoom and show you some of the settings that I get ready to go. All right, so new tab. This is the way I always go to Zoom. I know that for many of us, the Zoom app is living in our device. I never open the Zoom app on its own. I let the computer open it. So I start off with zoom.us and it brings me to their homepage and it will either say sign in or my account and I've been in and out of here all day. So right now I'm already signed in and I'm gonna click on my account. And it's going to bring me to my profile. So some of the basics that you're going to want to know is that everyone has a personal meeting ID. It's basically your personal conference room. Not necessarily what you want to use for your classes, but if you want to have a room like I'm using it, using my personal meeting room right now for all of you, because I just wanted to give you one link and make it simpler. But if I decide to use my personal link you know, three hours from now to talk to somebody that who's having a lot of trouble and they wanted a one on one and somebody else came in that's that would be a little bit tricky. So it's better to create a specific link for your classes, but know you have this like open conference room. It's all listed in this section here and it has a nice long number that you'll never remember, but it will also allow you to create a custom personal link. So I created mine and so it has my name on it. And way off to the right here, I have to keep moving windows around, sorry. Um, it says customize. So it's almost like when you want, went on AOL for the first time in your life and you had to pick a screen name and they were all taken. That's basically what you're trying to do here. You're typing in what you want your special room to be. And once you find one that's available, then it will let you save those changes. Cause it's a lot easier to share this link than it is to share the one with all the numbers. So that's one of the things that you have. You'll see your user type change. Um, right now, I believe most of yours say basic. We have put in the request to Zoom to upgrade our, account. everybody has a paid account. Uh, they have a backup right now of two to three weeks and I'm a week, a little over a week into that wait. So hopefully those will come soon. So right now you're, you're kind of in a holding pattern. So some of these things I'm going to show you, you may have to wait a little bit for, but most of these features you already have. You want to choose your language, your time zone. Your time zone, when you go in to select them, there's like 42 different ones just for where we live. So just make sure you're picking the right one. It's a long list. You can decide on your time and date format. And then you can also connect your Google Calendar. Mine is already connected so that it can read and write to my calendar and read and write to my contacts. It's easier when you're scheduling stuff. So you can go ahead and make those connections if that's something that you want to do. I wouldn't worry about the hook find in device. That's your just basic um, account page. You can put a picture in there as well. I'm still answering doorbells too. Let me just check the chat. Get personal meeting until we get the account upgrade. Okay, I wasn't sure which one, 
which ones were and which ones weren't. So soon you'll be able to. You can think about your screen name until then. Pick a really good one. Okay, I'm going to go into meetings because this is where a lot of questions have come to me. Right now I have no meetings scheduled, even though I'm Zooming like four hours a day with all of you because I'm using my Zoom room. But if I needed to schedule something that was recurring, this is how I would go about doing it. I would go up here to schedule a meeting and I would name it. So let's say that I'm going to be doing um, PD. I think when I scheduled them in the spring, I did like tech therapy at 10. That was the meeting that I did. And then if I wanted a description, I could put it in there. And then when I would want that to happen, well, of course, it would be at 10. Did I go right by the 10? No. 10 and a.m. because I'm asleep at 10 p.m. And how long it's going to last. So right now, you might have on your basic account, it might say that the duration is 40 minutes. It shouldn't cut you off. Once you have the paid account, then you'll have the ability to make it longer. Make sure you've chosen the right time. And then the recurring meeting is the big button that you want to click. Still reading the chat once in a while. Yep, all of you still have basic Zooms, except for 20 of us in the district that had gotten them back in the spring. But we will all have pro Zooms as soon as Zoom zooms it along. They have a three to two to three week backup and we're about a week into that wait. So hopefully those will all happen soon. I have all of your accounts ready to go in and ready to upgrade. So as soon as they give me the go ahead, you should be good to go and I'll send you a, a happy email to let you know that. I'm just checking the chat as I go along. So the recurring meeting. So you, it's similar to scheduling something in Google Calendar. You decide what you're going to do. I was doing daily at the time and I wanted it to repeat um, how long did I want it to read? No, I didn't want it to repeat for a certain number of days. You can have it repeat for a certain number of days, like up to 15 days, or you can have it do it by an end date. So I generally would yeah. repeat every one day. Yeah, every one day. Never mind. I'm sorry. I'm trying to answer doorbells and keep my train of thought. This one you would say every day, like one, two, three, four, or you wanted it to be every two days, like every other day, or you want it to be every third day. Hopefully that makes sense. But I was changing my date so that it would be ready to go on for as long as possible, but Zoom only allows you to go so far ahead before it stops you. So I believe if I were to try and do like December, I don't know if it would let me go that far ahead. It might, because I have a paid Zoom, but I was using basic before or you can say after how many days. So then it will put it into your schedule. You'll see that in a second when we go back to that screen. You don't have to require registration. Our students don't have Zoom accounts. You do want to have the waiting room. I believe I have that set at the district level. I have some power at the district level that I can force install some settings so you don't have to choose them. You can decide if you want your host video on or off when you enter the room and whether you want your participant video on or off when they come in. You can give them the option of connecting via telephone or computer audio or both. I always choose both. And then these are some fancy buttons down here. You do not want your students to be able to get into the room before you, so don't check this button. We don't want them mucking around in the classroom before the teacher is there. I would definitely have them muted upon entry. Chances are they might still unmute themselves, but at least if you have a whole bunch of people come in at the same time, they'll be quiet. Do not check this box. We had some issues that we learned the hard way in the spring. Me too. Um, I thought that that would sound really good to have only authenticated users, but an authenticated user is a person with a Zoom account. We don't want our students to have Zoom accounts because they're not adults, they are children. So don't check that box. You can also pre-assign your breakout rooms, which we are not doing in this class. We'll do it in the next hour. And then whether or not you want to automatic, automatically record the meeting, um, I like to do it not automatically, like, and now I'm having a panicky moment. I am recording, right? Yes, I am. Because <laughs> um, I do forget sometimes, but I don't press that. I like to have the opportunity to do it myself. And then if you have any other hosts that you want to add, you can throw that in there too. It's awesome to have a co-pilot. I think that was probably more feasible in the spring when we had some office hours and we weren't all doing everything at the same time. I think that it's going to be a little harder to have or find a co-pilot now. Hope is going to check. 
I was I reached out to Hope and asked if we could have any volunteers. I know that Consuelo was trying to get some volunteers that um, want to help, but they can't come into the school. So if I could train them as co-pilots, people who sit in your Zoom with you, much the way that they'd be in your classroom to help you anyway, um, to let people in and answer the doorbell or to be able to, like if there's a question in the chat, like there's a question in the chat right now or a couple of them and I didn't see them. Um, I'm exploring that for you. If it were me, it would be like, say, my mom used to volunteer in my classroom all the time. I'd be like, hey, mom, I'm going to train you on how to help me in Zoom, get your Corey in. And that's what we're trying to talk about right now. I asked Hope last night. So it's a very new idea that I'm exploring. But I think that having a co-pilot makes things a lot easier. I'm going to look at your questions really quick. Um, repeat what I said about the personal meeting versus setting up a separate. Yes, I will. Um, let me read the other questions. I will manually record my meetings. Yes, I will show you how I do that too. How to record. Um, when we record, do we save it in the cloud or Zoom on our devices? It's going to go to the cloud once you get your account, and that'll be in the next class. I'll show you how to do it, but I'll show you how to manage them in the next class. Um, is there a means by which we incorporate the video disclaimer automatically? I put that in and I glued it in so it should come up as a default for everybody, the video disclaimer thing. And do you have to record all your Zoom meetings with students? Yes, you're supposed to do that and then you save them. And then if there's an issue that you need to raise or that you're concerned about, then you have that. Are you gonna save them all forever? No, you're gonna run out of space. We only have so much space on the Zoom cloud, even with pro accounts. So I'm gonna show you some ways to be able to manage that. Um, but I believe that you can save it for a certain amount of time or if you know that everything went fine, that type of thing. We'll, we'll explore how to do that but we don't have enough space to store all of your Zooms for the whole school year. So we'll figure that out. Um, how do we get to the settings page that I'm on right now? I went to zoom.us and then I logged in using my Google account, zoom.us. So someone asked to re-explain the difference, oh, it's on the other screen, between your personal Zoom room and your um, scheduled Zooms. Let me finish scheduling this meeting and then maybe I can do a better job of explaining that. So I've just done all my settings. I'm going to hit save. It's going to bring me basically to that meeting page, but I'm going to go back off to the left here and click on meetings one more time. So now it's going to show you that I have a meeting scheduled every single day at 10 o'clock called tech therapy at 10. Special meeting ID. Let me admit my friends. It has a special meeting ID what you end up sharing with your students, the one that we keep so secret so that they can't share it out. It's not as easy to, you know, guess what it is because it's a number, but you also have the option once, here we go, back to my profile page, you have a personal meeting ID. Basically, it will be your own meeting room, your own conference room that you can either share the number or once you have your pro account, you'll be able to create a custom name for it. I'm using it during these courses just because I want to make things as easy as possible for all of you. And I know that you're not just going to pop in at any time. Um, but if I wanted to be able to keep separate meetings for separate groups of kids, then I would be using this schedule meeting link. We talked about it um, in one of the Q and A's yesterday that even though it says 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., right now it's 1.25 p.m. And if I wanted to start that meeting, I could. It doesn't have to be during those times. It won't start by itself. It won't start without me. So I can have that start right now and I could open that room. It's not something that is set in stone. And then once the time goes by, I could always start tomorrow's because at some point this meeting will be kind of dead for the day. And then the start button will move its way down to the next one. So you can always start a scheduled meeting earlier or later. Um, it's, not, it's not bound to the times that you put in there, if that makes sense. So let me get, resettle my thoughts and look at your chat again. Oh, all right, there were no questions. <laughs> no new ones. Did I get what you said before? Oh, about recording. So when you record, Gosh, that was probably the bane of my existence for the spring because it depended on what kind of device you were on as to whether or not you could record at all, um, whether it recorded locally or it recorded to the 
cloud. But if I go in here to recordings, what will happen once you have your Zoom Pro account is when you hit the record button, like you get into your meeting and everybody's there and you're like, hey, I'm gonna hit record. And when you hit that record button, A, they're gonna get the disclaimer on their end and you're gonna get a message that says, do you wanna save it locally or do you wanna save it to the cloud? Locally means in your device. If you're on like a Mac or a PC, then you have that option, but there's no need to do that once you get your pro account you wanna be saving it to the cloud, which you're looking at my cloud right now. It has um, three recordings. Two of them are this morning, and one of them is the one we're in right now. It's in the process of recording. So later on, I can download it, I can share it. Oftentimes, um, what we're doing with the school committee ones is we're sharing a link to it, and it's living in the Zoom cloud but what I'm doing with your trainings is I'm downloading them to my computer and then I'm uploading them to YouTube so that then I can remove them from my Zoom cloud and I have more space. I like space in my cloud. I don't wanna run out of space. If I'm recording things like you're going to have to, you know, like the save it and keep it just in case you need it. Like I said, you're gonna run out of room. You don't wanna take up all that space for the whole year. So I would, I would consider, you know, at the end of a week or the end of two weeks, you know, if there are any things that you're concerned about, make sure that you raise those concerns with your administrator. But otherwise, I'd be pretty comfortable deleting anything that didn't seem to be an issue. You're going to run out of space. You can't save them all anyway. So you're going to have to make some of those decisions as to what to get rid of. But if there's any that you're creating as tutorials that you want to put up on YouTube, then download them into your device and then put them up into YouTube and then delete them. Whew, I feel like I'm talking to myself, even though I know there's like 55 people out there. I'm looking in the chat again. It's like you have to set up three different Zoom meetings recurring every day. If you are an elementary teacher, we can't have the same Zoom invite throughout the day. Yeah, you can. Um, so you can have the same Zoom invite throughout the day if that works for you. There's, there's no right answer. It's gonna be what works for you in your setting with your students. Definitely with the youngers, I would schedule the same meeting every day, just like I scheduled it for 10 o'clock, but I would always open that same meeting where it said uh, meetings. Let me go back over there. I would share the link to my students that is to this tech therapy at 10, even though it's, you know, all day with Susie type of thing. And then they can come in at any time that you've told them to come in. But if you're a high school teacher, you might want to create different ones for different sections because you have more of a chance of students coming in when you might not want them to. Elementary teachers, you have pretty much the same students. So it's going to be a, a different call for different grade levels. And the students adjust the settings on their Zoom software on their Chromebooks. There's some settings that they are able to change within the Zoom platform, pretty much what you can see right now in your Zoom room that you're in with me. They have pretty much those same controls. They differ on different devices, but on their Chromebooks, they'll have a certain level of control over their experience. It's not a lot of choice. Most of the choices you get to control, which is nice. Okay. What is it, 1.30? I can't believe it's 1.30 already. Stopping for a second because I wanna make sure that I hit everything that I wanted to. Oh no, I'm gonna go down here to settings. So we've done the profile, we've done meetings. Don't worry about webinars, just pretend it's not there. Recordings will become more um, important once we get our pro accounts right now, don't worry about it. And then settings is what I'm gonna click on next. So I'm not going through all of these. I'm only gonna go through the first three and then the other three I'll go through in the next class. Just double check in the chat. Oh, doorbell rang. <laughs> all right, so your security settings. You definitely wanna have your waiting room enabled. I believe that I have that set at the district level, but always have your waiting room on. I did not use it during the spring for all of you, so you didn't have to wait for me, but I am using it now. Um, I believe as of September 24th or something, Zoom is requiring that you either have a password for your room or a waiting room. 
a password I think is useless because you can share out to your kids your link, but you also have to share out the password. So if they wanna share out all of that to their friends, they can. Um, so instead using the waiting room as a kind of a stop um, gap measure to control who's coming in your room is a better option. You can then have um, the options for your waiting room. Who's gonna go in there? You're gonna click everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. And then customizing your waiting room. I've already done that at the district level for you, but you might be able to customize some of it also yourself. Like the, um, I don't know if the logo's in there for all of you or not, but you can add in a waiting room description if you want. You can, you can fluff that up to your liking. Can you interact with people in the waiting room if you don't recognize the name? No, I wish you could. That would be awesome. Well, yes, you can. And I learned that only yesterday by mistake because I know the chat, I don't have anyone in the waiting room right now, but I know the chat at the bottom of your chat, when you type a message in, um, one of the choices is everyone in the waiting room. So if there's one person in the waiting room left and you don't know who they are, you can send a message to the waiting room and say, who are you? Um, I still don't know how they'll, they'll be able to write back to you. So it's gonna have to be a judgment call on what they say that makes you say, oh, okay, come on in or no way, get out. But yes, you can send a message in the waiting room. Sorry, that's something brand new to me as of yesterday. Like I said, I'm still learning too. Okay, so you don't have to require a password, passcode, passcode, passcode. I'm going past all that. I already said don't say that authenticated users can join because that means they have to have a Zoom account. We don't want kids to have Zoom accounts. That's another one on the same thing. Scheduling a meeting. All right, to start, and this is actually when we went in and scheduled the meeting, we really already made this choice. You probably saw it, I turned it on for both of them. So you can turn it on here as well, and then you won't have to make that decision every single time. Oh good, so Colleen's saying that last year you sent a message to the waiting room, but you didn't get a response back, so you don't know if it worked or not. That's something that to definitely play with. I've been suggesting that you get together with your team and, and put Zoom through the ringer, put yourself through the ringer and say, okay, what if we do this? Uh, try that, give this a shot. If I'm in the waiting room, what do you see? Those types of things. Because that's the only way that we're gonna be able to learn how it works and what it feels like on both ends. Um, I'll try and do it too myself, but definitely try it and then let me know. We've already answered this question when we set up the meeting, but you can keep that setting here. We've already said that we don't want anyone arriving before you and I have that. So Brian Carroll is in our waiting room. I'm gonna try and send him a message. Hi, Brian. Can you answer me while you are in the waiting room? So let's see if he can answer back before I admit him. I'll give it about 30 seconds and then we'll see. Because I don't want him to hang out in there long enough. All right, I'm letting him in and we can pounce on him. Brian, when you were in the waiting room, could you see the message that I sent you? I could see the message that you sent, but it wasn't clear um, how to respond. There wasn't like a, a kind of a, a, a box underneath it. Like it didn't look like the chat looks in, in a, once you're in the meeting. All right. Yeah, I didn't. That's why I left and then came back, but I didn't see it. It wasn't clear to me. Okay. All right. Well, thank you for being our guinea pig. I guess you could say to the whoever it is, if it's something that you're worried about, you could send a message to the waiting room saying, you know, please send me an email right now or um, something to that effect to be able to take care of that. Hopefully, once we get rolling, it's not going to be a concern. These kids are going to be so busy working and listening to you that they're not going to have time to mess around. But um, at least we're finding some of the tools that will help with that if we have to worry about it. Okay, um, enabling your personal meeting ID, we talked about earlier, you can do that in your settings here. I would always mute your participants. These are all settings we just did when we set up a meeting, but they're also in your general settings. So it's just more than one place to be able to do that. Oh, right here, these are the settings that are in the meeting. I don't know about, the, I wouldn't worry about that. I don't even know how to explain it, let alone um, I don't know, don't worry about it, pretend it's not there. So the chat, I would be preventing the participants from saving their chat because your participants are gonna be 
um, students, you can still save the chat. It's part of your download or your recording that you'll get when you're done with a meeting. I would not be allowing private chat between your students at the beginning of the year until you've set up, you know, your understanding of how you're using Zoom. Later on, it's something you might be able to offer that then the students knowing that you're going to get a copy of it anyway and a record of who said what. So I would wait for that until you kind of have a handle on how to manage all of this and whether or not you're auto saving those chats, um, you can make that decision as well. Definitely have your sound notifications on, even though it's the most annoying thing I've experienced in years. It's important to know when someone new is coming in the room and also to hear that someone's exiting. I've said before, you can exit my room if you have something else to do, but if you were my real students and I'm in charge of you, I'd want to know where you, that someone's left and then know when they're coming back in. And when you get caught up in teaching, you'll need those sounds. Um, as to record their voice to use as the notification. Oh, this is if they're joining by phone, which I don't think has happened very often. I haven't had a chance to use that setting, so I would have to play with that myself. We're getting close to the um, advanced stuff. Whether or not you're allowing them to send files. I could do that with you guys because you're teachers. I could be like, upload your PDF or upload that, you know, Google Doc that you mentioned, and you could actually put it in the chat and people can click on it and access it. I would probably keep it off for students until, again, you've set up those expectations and parameters. Maybe, you know, introduce it down the road like, hey, this might be a great way for us to share materials. Just know that once you share something in there and you leave the Zoom, it's very hard for people to get back to it. So it's not the most efficient way to share files. It's just a quick way to do it if you need to get to a certain place. Um, whether or not they want that survey at the end that I think we probably always ignore anyway. <laughs> and the survey does come in somewhere. I can't remember where it shows the results. You can allow a co-host. The polls, you'll have access to those once um, you have your paid account, and I'm going to try and go over those in the advanced class. The control bar at the bottom that when you float your mouse down to the bottom, all of a sudden all the tools pop up, you can have that showing all the time by clicking on that button. Screen sharing. Don't allow your students to, screen, to share their screens again until later down the road when you have established routines and expectations and they know what is okay and not okay. A lot of the Zoom bombers, that's what they were doing. They were taking control of the screen and then sharing things on the screen that nobody wants to look at. So I would keep that on post only. And same thing, disable for your users. Annotations, this is the whiteboard, which I'll be showing in the next class too. I can't believe it's 20 minutes or two. There's so much in Zoom. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, it's okay, because there's a lot in here. Um, the annotation is whether or not you're going to allow the students to save that annotation screen, the whiteboard screen. I'll go over the whiteboard in the next class. Only the user who is sharing can annotate, which is something you might want to toggle on or off, because once you have that whiteboard up, you might want everyone to be able to touch it all at the same time or maybe only the person who is controlling the whiteboard. Those are more like personal settings. More settings about the whiteboard, um, being able to auto save it when it's done as the PNG, which is a picture or a PDF, which is like a document file. Remote control, I got nothing. Um, Nonverbal feedback are a lot of these little buttons that we tried using earlier whether or not those are on or off. Same thing with meeting reactions, um, being able to put like the thumbs up, thumbs down, those types of things, so I have those on. Whether or not you're gonna allow people that get removed to rejoin, and I don't mean the people that leave on their own, but if you kick somebody else, somebody out because of whatever reason, do you want them to be able to come back in? Being able to rename themselves, I allow it for you guys. I don't know if you want that for your students. You can rename your students as well. If they come in and they use the name SpongeBob, for instance, or a name that you don't recognize. And then you can also hide their profile pictures in a meeting. So if they've created a profile picture that you don't want them showing up on the screen, you can shut that off as well. Whew. That's all the behind the scenes stuff.
I can't show you live in this Zoom all of the settings that are in, like that I can see as a teacher, because you can't see my screen. That's why I made the videos. So back here, um, in a meeting, some basic settings, more in settings. These last two little YouTubles will tell you more about the settings you could in um, within the actual meeting while you're there in per. But I wanted to at least give you a walk behind the scenes on some of the basic settings. And if you forget, I just said a lot, <laughs> a lot. That's no problem. You can watch this recording when I put it back up later, or you can watch these videos down here, which probably tell you pretty much the same stuff I just said, but I said it on my couch last night instead. Um, or you can reach out to me in email and say, I know you mentioned something about this, but can you refresh my memory? So that's fine as well. Um, let me put the link in again. This is the link to the Google Doc. So it's 1.42. I want to try and have 10 minutes of Q&A <laughs> now that I've gone on and on. And then again, stopping at 10 minutes of the hour so we have time to transition to whatever is next for you. So if you have questions, they've been coming into the chat all along. I love that. But if you want to unmute again or if you want to add more, you can. If you've gotten enough from me, you can leave. If you want to go watch those videos, you can do that, whatever works for you. Susie, will you add the link of the video that you showed at the very beginning in this doc? Sure. Oh, the guy who's talking fast? Yeah, because that was really good. I'd like to go back to that. All right. Yep, I can do that. Actually, I'll put it into the, um, I'll put it into the Google Doc so that you can access it even after we leave the room. KCC is louder now than it was this morning. All right, there it is. Sorry, there's so many things layered on top of my screen that basic navigation is tricky. Let's move the chat. Hey, Susie. Yes. That's a good question. Will kids who are remote on day one have a way to access the Zoom links for teachers? Will that be their landing page? How are families and students going to know on day one what our Zoom links are? Um, I would say you're either going to email them or Maybe Google Classroom, post them in Google Classroom if you get that, because you are you can put your Google Classroom code on your landing page if you'd like, and then you can put your content in there. Um, I'll keep thinking about it, but those are my two first two go-tos on how to get that link out to families. You don't want to be blasting it on Twitter or blasting it on Facebook or anything. Right, or like administration, are they going to be like doing an all call the night before maybe to parents to tell parents that if your child is remote on day one, on the 16th, they need to check Google Classroom or email or something so they know how to, to see it. Point. That is a great point. I will, I'm adding that to my notes. I'm not texting anyone. I'm just on my phone to put notes in it. No, thank you. You're welcome. Good suggestions. Day one remote ideas. All right, good, good. Any other questions? Oops, I just want. I'm to going know. to teach you ten recon. I love his voice. Um, share. Sorry, I know that I'm taking up your whole screen right now. Oh, I'm going to teach you. How many buttons can I push? Oh, there we go. Share. And copy the link. Copy link address. Sorry. But I had a little bumbly stop right there. Back to the Zoom. Back to my list. Video shared in the slideshow. There we go. Okay. So now it's in the Google Doc. 
took me 15 steps. It probably should have taken me three, but I did it. 146, any other questions? I'm gonna try and find my chat. I don't know where I put it. Oh, there it is. Any other questions? I have thoughts. All right, I'm gonna stop the recording. Don't say anything amazing now. Can I post the Google Doc link? Yes, I can. I go to here and copy and vomit. There we go. Okay, I'm gonna search the whole screen over again to find how I stop the recording. There we go. Stop recording and then 